And it's proof that consumerism is the key factor in capitalism. Look at the fact that our economy is based on consumption and advertising is the arm of creating artificial demand. And without that arm, and it's so polluted, as you know, I, mean, I can't even imagine what the world would be like without advertising, but without that arm, you wouldn't have people aspiring to things that are highly irrational, abused by our social inclusion. When advertising presents something to the community that seems to be something that some people want, it spreads like a virus and then everybody wants it because it's an issue of social inclusion, which is a part of our biology because that's how we identify. We identify and define ourselves by how others see us and how we are included in the group. And that's why NASCAR is so good at capitalism. It's a cyclical reminder to buy more shit. We see a car with Tide written on it, and, and we're probably gonna buy more laundry detergent even though we only own one shirt and no pants or food. I mean, we would know when the deep state is starting to get desperate, when they start taking ad space on NASCAR, right? When the fuck Venezuela car comes out, that's when you know that's some desperate propaganda right there. The tech industry is run on consumerism for a product that today is very necessary. But 25 years ago, I mean, having a phone in your car was a ludicrous idea. But we are heading towards a world where we won't be able to get into a car without a phone. I mean, driving will not be for peasants and serfs. And neither will it be for people that want to stop texting and driving. We are going to encourage it. And we are going to make sure that you are, you are Instagramming where you are going, how you're getting there, and when you get there. Okay, how else will people know that you truly exist and are alive? But the problem comes when we can't afford some of the necessary technology because the rich haven't really shared the wealth, right? A, a lot of Americans work two jobs to put food on the table, and according to the bootstraps ideology, those people should be the real billionaires but with the workaday folks can't think about the, the consumerism let alone participate in it is just as important as the ideal if you want to see where the material comes from it's shaped by ideas but and here comes his radicalism it runs the other way too the ideas don't come from nowhere they come out of the real world the ideas we have as people have to do with the real material problems we have as human beings and how we solve them where do we get our food where do we get our shelter how do we get protection as little children from the elements from our parents all of these real material matters of life and survival are shaping our ideas every bit as much as our ideas shape the reality. But fear not, citizens. The rich have created credit. For example, when people couldn't buy in the 1970s, the capitalist system kept going anyway. How did it do that? How did it keep going when it, the people didn't have enough money from their wages to buy? The solution was credit. We loaded the world up House credit, that's your mortgage. Car payment credit, nobody buys a car except by paying out. Credit cards, which didn't exist before the 1970s for anything but traveling businessmen and only a small number of them. And then when that was not enough, we loaded up for the first time in American history an entire generation of students who can't get a degree without loading up with tens of thousands of dollars of debt. We kept the system going. People could buy stuff even though their wages didn't pay for it by borrowing. And you can borrow money from the banks and participate in consumerism. Mainly because of the interest that's charged. Because we, in capitalism, every product has to have something that makes money, excuse me, that makes a profit. And then when the sale of money, which is what banks do, they create and sell money effectively. You know, when they lower and raise interest rates, they're, they're changing the price of what it's going to cost you to get money and a loan. And then they produce interest, obviously, and that interest doesn't exist in the money. So the banks create money and sell it to you with interest? Wait, we are selling money. We've put a price tag on the dollar bill, and the math 
isn't adding up. And we would all know this information if we were better at math and not proud of our ignorance about it. I'd tell you how far down the list America ranks in education, but we don't know because that's how bad at math we are. They're selling the very thing this economy is run on. And selling money is why NASCAR makes sense to people. It's like getting caught in a time loop. I mean, this is proof that our economy is run on imagination. And society says that imagination is only for kids. And I really wish that kids invented more shit about the economy because then it would be more fun you know trading video game cartridges uh, or, or juice boxes instead of stocks bonds and tips on crushing the spirit of poor people and the credit system doesn't even make any sense right that you have better credit the more you're in debt isn't the point to be out of debt so you can buy more shit and then maybe go back into debt? No, it's to keep you in the constant loop of debt. It's it's like the the golf points loop of debt. And there's no security in it either, right? When you use your debit card, you need to put in your PIN, an eyeball scanner, a spit test. And with credit, you can just squeal a little line, and that's close enough to your name. So when your if information and card is actually stolen, who cares? As long as the robber is buying shit you or they don't need. <laughs>